look at. Oh, there's Mr. Bob. Good morning, Bob. Hey, I've got an interesting little situation here. Why don't we duck the music? So on my iPhone, the time, no, I, I don't know if you remember, I remember, but on my iPhone, the time is 941 and has been for at least a half an hour. But of course, the real time is 11.51. And I went into my settings, went into general, went into date and time, turned it off of automatic, back onto automatic, tried to set the time, and it's frozen at 9.41. The interesting thing here is that I, uh, now is the countdown time we're gonna start over again? Yes, it is. Okay, I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, we'll. We'll start on time, even though the countdown timer is wrong. So anyway, I was blaming it on iOS 14, which I have here on this. Um, iPhone 6. So now I'm going to my channel on my iPhone 6 so I can see how many people are here. Seeing my live. There it is, live. Okay, one is watching. So I guess that's you, Bob. So, how are things at the ranch? You're getting to use your swimming pool for a long time this year. I'm going to type a little welcome comment here. text expander hi Helen welcome glad you could make it what studio are we in today now we don't have Q no Q studios we are in studio a let's see how do I do this a is that an a you can't tell upside down a we're in Studio A1. We're going to call this A1 because we have this beautiful expanse here. Oh, there's a microphone right there. And then back in the corner over there is Studio A2. So this is A1, the wonderful one. And then we have A2. So this is my Mac table. Remember Mac tables? It says right here, Mac table with a registered copy mark symbol. So I've got to watch the time here. Remind me if I forget that I'm going to get out of this at 10 o'clock, even though the countdown timer is going to say something different. Actually, I could change the countdown. Let's not worry about it. Just had to remember just to stay on the countdown timer while I am counting down in the timer. So yeah, so so far I have, well, let's see, I have, well, Studio A, then I have Studio B, but um, B is very limited, it's just a, my old, now it's my old uh, 2013 MacBook Pro, but it's on a standing desk. So they tell us in the streaming, live streaming world, that it's better to be standing up. You get more energy 
that way and I uh, haven't figured out how to get this entire setup to raise. I guess I could raise the whole desk, but that might be uh, a daunting mechanical challenge. So, I'm assuming everybody can hear me okay with the background music. It's not too high. So, interesting. Do I have to keep refreshing this? Oh, okay. That's, I guess I do. Interesting. I noticed that my right ear opening is larger than my left ear opening. I have to find the ear pieces that came with these earphones. I'll put a bigger one in my right ear because it keeps getting loose. Well, hi yourself, hi noon. Isn't that Kurt a silly guy? Funny guy. Kurt, you don't have a profile picture. You need to fix that. That doesn't look at all like you. And I know you have some great pictures. And what is Kurt? Oh, I see Kurt's over there. Kurt's over here. You're not loud enough. Okay. So let's duck the music even more. How's that sound, Kurt? Is that better? Because according to my audio meter here, it looks like I am loud enough. But I think the music was too loud. So three minutes before we get this show on the road. So there's the music starting over. That's good. That's working the way it's supposed to. So let me know if uh, if I'm loud enough, somebody better. Okay, good. Thanks, Kurt. So um, better, I guess I'm better than ever now. So here, uh, Kurt, since you have an artistic eye, I'm thinking that the uh, color on the Gopher logo here, the black doesn't work. I'm thinking of having my art department change that to maybe um, a rich brown, tan, something like that. What do you think about that? Hello, Leslie Ann. You think it would show up better in a, in a brown or tan kind of color? on the road again. Who's on the road again? I'm not on the road again. I'm right here. I'm going no I did go to the dentist this morning. I cleverly of course six months ago when I set my dental uh, cleaning appointment I didn't know I would be doing go for lunch so we fix that this time. No conflict in six months. Okay, so it's 11.59 on the computer clock. Just set a border. A little inside baseball here. Set a border of one to two pixels around your logo. That will set it off in the background. Okay. Art department, did you hear that? There we go. Okay, it's 10 o'clock. We're going to just jump on out of here. So, welcome to Go for Lunch number 21, Lucky 21. And we are here to help you make your digital life easier. That's my new tagline. What do you think of that? So, 
Welcome. If uh, this is your first time here, please type in new in the comments so that we can all get to know you and greet you. And if you are new, you may not know that I am Roger Harmon, founder of Gopher Technology. I've been helping people with various technology since 1983, before the Mac came out in 1984. I was ahead of my time. Started out with Apple II. So we are here live so we can have a conversation. And the reason for that is so that you can ask questions and I hopefully either can answer them or find the answer for you and get back with you. So remember, there are no stupid questions. And when you ask a question, you may be helping somebody else. Hi, Deb. You are new. Well, thanks for joining us. So, um, yeah, that's a good reminder to us all, Deb, Deb is that um, if you don't catch the live, you can go to the YouTube channel, which is in the Gopher Gazette, which you receive every Monday morning. And if you don't receive it, just put a comment below and I will make sure that you're added to the mailing list. So back to questions. Put a Q colon in front of your question and that way I can spot them easy. And remember, uh, there is a 30 second or so, it varies each time, delay between when you enter your comment and when I see it. So don't let that throw us off. So I'm going to uh, give the presentation and then I'll be pause from time to time and look for questions. So don't feel like I'm ignoring you if I don't answer your question immediately. So today we're talking about do you have messages in your Apple Mail inbox that you no longer want to receive? Have you ever wondered if just unsubscribing is the most effective way to get rid of them? Well, we're going to answer those questions today on Go For Lunch. So, as you may know, the obvious way to get rid of your messages that you subscribe to and now you're, you know, they're just piling up because they send you a message every day. Uh, a lot of these companies uh, kind of put you on an email newsletter chain and it, every day you get a message whether you want one or not. So you, you can unsubscribe. So when you click a link at the bottom of the email, you should find a, a link that says unsubscribe. And we're going to go into exactly how that works here in just a second, but let me just describe the process. Sometimes your email address is going to be there when it goes over to the web page. Sometimes it's not. So, but before we uh, explain more how to do it in Apple Mail on your Mac, let's talk about a really neat little shortcut. So, um, let me get this set up here. So there we are. Okay, so we're going to look at an iPhone. So if you have an iPhone or an iPad, which we call iOS devices, you have a real simple way to unsubscribe. Now at the, uh, uh, just below where it says uh, all inboxes, you see, um, and below the statement that this message is from a mailing list, you see an, a word called unsubscribe. So if you find now all of your emails may not have this, unfortunately, but many of them will. So the first pass at getting rid of the unwanted email is to do it on your iPhone or iPad. Go through, find all the ones that you do not want, and simply click on unsubscribe. So I'm going to do that right now. And it says unsubscribe from this mailing list. The mail uh, mail will send a message from my email address to unsubscribe on this mailing list. Then you click unsubscribe again. And bam, you are unsubscribed. And that is by far 
the simplest way to unsubscribe. So again, not all of the uh, emails that you're trying to get rid of will have that um, capability, but a lot of them will. So, okay. So let's look at how it would work in Apple Mail. So we're going to click here and shift over so I'm in the center of the picture. So here we are in Apple Mail. So what I'm going to do, I, I'm, I love Vanessa, but she just sends me too many emails that I never read. So I'm going to unsubscribe from her valuable information that she sends me. So let me see if we can make this a little bigger so you can see. So right here at the bottom, and, and actually this is fairly large type, many times <coughs> this is not it's so large. It's like in six-point type, so you have to really uh, you know, get your magnifying glass out and find the unsubscribe button. So here it is. So at the bottom, and it has the the address with it. But before we click on unsubscribe, we're going to scroll back up here, go to the very top where it says to and your name. Okay, so we're going to go here and first thing we're going to do is verify that this is the address that this email is being sent from. And then we're going to copy that address. So in some of these unsubscribe setups, they take your uh, email address with them when they go to the web page, and some of them they do not. So this way, if they do not, we have it in our clipboard, and we can just paste it in, and we won't have to type it in. So ready? We're going to hit unsubscribe. And now, so in this one, they did bring my email address in. And of course, if it wasn't here, we'll pretend like it wasn't here. We do command V Victor for paste. And there it is. So now we will unsubscribe. And then they many times give you a little survey. Um, they're very sorry to see you go. If you decide you made a mistake here, you can resubscribe right there. And then if you like, you don't have to do this, but you can say, um, we're just going to say, I get too many emails from you. Um, and then you submit your feedback. And then they say, thank you, your comments have been recorded. So then you would do, um, if you use keyboard shortcuts, you would do a command W to get rid of that page. And... That's a preview of coming attractions. So we're going to come back here and talk about another way of doing this. So, so that's uh, one way. Um, so sometimes um, you're not sure about this organization, company, whatever that you're dealing with, and you um, think that maybe if I unsubscribe, that's just validating that I'm a living, breathing human being, and they will either keep me on the mailing list or they'll take me off their mailing list and sell my email address to somebody else. And that is known to happen. So if you're at all, you know, you got that little funny feeling here in your uh, in, intestinal fortitude, your instincts tell you, I'm not sure about these people, then here is what you want to do. You want to make it a junk. Uh, you want to tell it, send it to junk. So let's go back and show you how to do that. So uh, one thing to be aware of is that I can't scroll when I am 
on my video production software. So here is Vanessa. So note that even though we unsubscribed, her message is still here. So you would have to do something else to get rid of it. And then hopefully, and a lot of times, I, I love this one, a lot of times they say, this will take 72 hours to take effect. You know, computers run at the speed of light. And uh, so that is a little suspicious to me. So up here in the menu bar, in the mail menu bar, we see a heading called message. We click on that and we get a drop down and it says move to junk. Note, cleverly hidden right next to that is the keyboard shortcut, which is shift, the up arrow means shift, command J for junk. So my recommendation to you is to learn that keyboard shortcut, shift, command J. So we're gonna click out of here and we're gonna go to our keyboard and hold down shift, command, and it's kind of a stretch. So I'm holding down the shift key with my pinky finger, the command key with my thumb, and I'm reaching my index finger all the way over to the J, as in junk. And now she disappears. So if you are hesitant about whether they will do the right thing when you um, unsubscribe, then do not unsubscribe, but send it to junk. You might be wondering, oh, I'll have all this stuff in my junk. What will I do? Well, if you've seen Yo uh, in the last several years, I have set your mailbox behaviors to automatically delete any email that is 30 days old. So Vanessa, in 30 days, her email that we just assigned to junk will disappear and you don't have to do a thing. Do not worry, do not get all excited about clearing out your junk. It will be cleared out automatically if you have that mailbox behavior set. So I hope that makes sense. So um, now, do we have any questions? So go ahead and type in any questions that you have. And while we're waiting for those to pop up, because there is a delay, I want to remind you that um, I have a mask, will travel. So I am still seeing people in person, taking all the precautions and helping you with your individual problems. So. If you'd like to make an appointment, the phone number and email will be at the end of the program. So another way to uh, take care of junk is to create a junk email address. So that's a new email address that you create. You could use uh, Gmail. You could use Yahoo. Uh, there's many other services out there that have free email accounts available and you would just use that one anytime you sign up for a newsletter or you know anything that's not uh, personal correspondence or working with a uh, financial organization, something that's you know more uh, serious, uh, you could use that junk email address. And that way you have all your, or most of your junk hopefully in one place and it's easy to go through and get rid of stuff. So that's yet another way to deal with junk mail is have a specific uh, email address that will handle that. Several of you, including Anne, and wait, there's a question. When you do new cards, Leslie Ann is saying, put the shift command J on your tip card. Oh, okay. Thank you. That's a great idea. I may have to do larger cards because there's several other things I'd like to add. And um, 
the art department and I had a challenge getting all that information on that little business size card card. So maybe we're going to do a next time we'll do a postcard card size. Maybe that makes any sense. Four by six next time. So uh, great idea uh, because there's some other things like command W to close a window that I use all the time and I, I don't think that's on there either. Okay. So in the Gopher Gazette, I made a little tip that suggested before you go on your Zoom calls or any kind of, of um, video that you check down detector. And for those of you that don't know what down detector is, uh, we're going to go to it right here. And I think I am in Safari, should be. Where's Safari? There's Safari. Okay. So this is down detector. And uh, <laughs> wouldn't you know, my doctor, who I've been trying to get a hold of for two days, is calling right now. So this is down detector. Now, the problem with down detector is that... I misspelled it. And so the link that, that Ann went to and Susan went to uh, did not work. So I am putting the correct link here in the chat. So you can get the correct link. So, um, so Ann has an excellent question here. Um, and her question, okay, so what happened to down detector? Okay, so let's go back to down detector. And let's go back and see if we can get Ann's question up here. And it doesn't look like Ann's question is going up there. So uh, I don't see it. All right, so Ann says, where are you going down detector to see if there's problems? Okay, well, so what you do is in the very upper right-hand corner, you go to the little magnifying glass, which signifies search. So I know that in Anne's case, she's on Comcast. So you can see before we leave Cox here, you can see that they've had some problems recently. Now, right now at, um, oh, that's interesting. Oh, let me refresh this first. Okay, Alexa's talking to me. Okay, so you can see here that they've had some spikes here. These are the number of complaints. So at um, 1042, they had 478 complaints. But right now at 1202, they only have 95 complaints. So back to Ann's question. How do you find out what your internet provider is doing? So you click on the little... Um, oh, you're still seeing my email screen. Oh, okay, thanks. So let's go back. Oh, I see. Okay, sorry. I thought I switched that. Oops. Okay, it's not switching. Okay. You're still seeing my... Okay, well, there's a way to get rid of that. We'll just quit email. How's that? And now we will try to get Safari back up here. Well, isn't that special? So now when we go to the Mac, you are only seeing my... You, know, you can see the little circle where I'm moving my window around so let's try something else here and if I go in here and I go to share screen I'm going to say Safari Cox outage there we go okay so let's move that over a little bit so I'm not on top of it and there we go okay so, up here, okay, so we're back. You couldn't see any of this, so let me talk about Cox for a second. So you can see here we had the spike 
here, 478 people at 10.02 last night. We had 359 people at 1.47 a.m. Must be a bunch of gamers up there. And right now we have 85 people at 12.02. So that's the problem with Cox. And I had a problem this morning when I, around 8, well, would have been 8, it would have been around 9.30, my uh, upload speed was like 0.55 and the minimum upload speed we like to see is 10 megabits per second which would be 10.00 so up here again we are in the upper right hand corner we're going to type in comcast and hit return and there you are comcast so we click on comcast right here we see the nbc uh, peacock because Comcast owns NBC. And look at this. Look at this little peak here. It's not so little peak here. So this one is uh, 801 reports at 1020 this morning. Right now they only have 444 reports at 1150. And down to 384 at 1205. So hopefully that answers your question, Ann. And you can go anywhere you want. So if you're seeing, um, for example, if you're seeing buffering on Netflix, you could search for Netflix. So any online service, if you, could, if you knew how to spell Netflix, you could search for it. So, oh, look, Netflix. Now, the bottom line here, as I mentioned in my headline, in the... Um, uh, okay, and yes, you can find them on their list if they're having problems on the uh, down detector list. So here we have Netflix at 6.21 p.m. Um, yesterday, they had 59 reports. So so any anything that you can think of, like say maybe we want to go to uh, Hulu. Let's go to Crackle. Okay. Uh, K-L-E, I think it is. Now, Crackle is a free service. Um, and traditionally, the, the times I've tried to use Crackle, it, it didn't work. But as you can see, nobody, I think maybe nobody's using it, so that nobody's complaining. But if we go to the main um, homepage, this is what um, Ann was referring to, is they list the ones that are having problems. So let's take Zoom. Anybody ever use Zoom before? So here's Zoom. And at uh, 9.07 this morning, they had 483 reports. So then when you scroll down, you'll see a live outage map, which in the case of Zoom probably doesn't mean much. But then if you go down to the comments here, and you have to sign in to make a comment, either through uh, Discus, Facebook, Twitter, or uh, Google. So here's somebody that says, an hour ago, the breakout rooms weren't working. An hour ago, the text done ob... Oh, so that must be some place where you get information. And then here's a comment about Russian bots. So I guess there's still some security problems. So anyway, you can on any of these, you can scroll down a little further down the page and see what people are complaining about. And if we go back to um, Cox, for example, which is a short word, so it's easy to go back there. And we scroll down. So Cox is behaving itself right now. And we get down, so you can see here, 91% of the complaints are about internet. See the circle here with 91. So that's what people are complaining about. But if you look down here, you'll see some, some gopher tech guy three hours ago complained that his upload speed was 7 and his download speed was 0.55. And then I, I put, a, put in my uh, zip code in my city, so... People can relate. So here's a person from Las Vegas with their zip code. And three hours ago, their internet 
they last lost it at 8.30 last night, and they still don't have it. So consider ourselves lucky. Now, so apparently I said something that Alexa thought was requesting music. So now we have some beautiful music in the background. Alexa, off. And there we go. Okay. So there we go. Okay. So anyway, apologies for um, putting... Um, so yeah, Kurt has crazy speed. Oh, crazy fast speed. Well, good. So that's what we want. Crazy fast. Okay. So if there are no more questions... I'm very happy that you joined me today, and um, and I'm sorry again that we we I did not put that link in properly, but I will definitely check those links. Uh, speaking of links, I did put a bunch of links in for the previous program. So when you scroll down in the Gopher Gazette, you'll see little highlights of previous uh, broadcasts, Gopher lunches, and about the first. Five most recent ones have a link, so you can click on that link and go directly to that specific uh, video on YouTube. So, I'm sorry, Kurt. What was your Alexa doing anyway while you were watching Go for Lunch? That's what inquiring viewers want to know. So, yep, I'm sure they left a nice message and. I, I could probably only take me 10 minutes on hold to talk to somebody there, hopefully. Okay, thank you again for viewing, and we'll be here next week, same bat time, same bat station, for go for lunch at high noon on Tuesdays. So have a wonderful rest of your day, and if you have any questions, you may email me or call me at the following places.